a little look at you, you can see your pretty eyes, pretty red eyes. They're, <laughs> they're very maneuverable in their necks. <laughs> How much does a shark shoe weigh? That's a good How question. Much? How much does she weigh? Less than that. It's grams. They're really? very, very light. Yeah, I thought so. Yep. All right, so what we're going to do is you're going to hold your hand up really high, just like the Statue of Liberty. Perfect. So then on the count of three, what we're going to do is you're just going to give her a little toss. Red there tail. was also in that what mix of juvenile today, bald so eagle. Got a variety of <laughs> but I think he may have well. moved on. And you know the sex is. Goshawk. It is not red a goshawk. Tail. It is a red-tailed hawk. So goshawks are in our sipiter group, the woodland hawks. This is a red tail. We've seen lots of red tails moving mm -hmm. over, so it's a kind of a high probability for them to be catching a, a red tail if it's not too high like some of them. Um, this is a juvenile bird here, so one of the ways you can tell that is because it has a nice yellow eye. And let's turn it around. It does not have a red tail at all. So our young red-tailed hawks, they do have kind of that brown banded tail. Um, so one thing you're going to look for in the sky for a typical red-tailed hawk is you're going to look at that white breast. Do you see the white breast and then that dark, like, it's hard to see, it's my hands in the way, but right down here they have a dark belly band. And you've probably been hearing this from Clinton uh, quite a bit already today, but for those of you that don't know, that's one of the things to look for for red-tailed hawks. When I stretch out this nice, big, broad wing, you can also see a couple different marks. Um, up by the shoulder, kind of up in this area right here, this is called a patagial mark, so it's a dark patagial streak. And then um, in the wrist here, we also have a wrist comma, so kind of in that area right there. Can everybody see that? That wrist comma right here? My ring finger is pointing. Mm -hmm. um, so those are going to be one of the things, the three main things to look for. However, red tails are pretty neat. Um, you find them all over uh, the U.S. here. Uh, and they look a lot different. So we've got dark morphs, we've got light morphs, we've got criders, which are super, super light, and we have harlins, which are really, really dark. So sometimes you can't always see those marks. Um, but you do want to kind of look for that booty -o shape. They do, they're, they're their feathers, their secondary flight feathers, kind of near their bodies, more have a kind of a nice bulge near their body. So that's something you're always going to be able to see. All right, so this bird also, when it gets older, it's going to have that nice red tail, and then it's also going to have more of a red eye. This bird is really focused on something over here. Like, oh, wow. I love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was just caught in our banding station. You can see down here on his leg right there, he's got a band. It's a locking band, so it has a little tab that folds over. Um, it's a nine-digit number on there. No bird is ever going to have that same band. So we hope when we release this bird that it actually will get caught again. We'll start to learn a little bit more information about the bird. When you catch it one time, you put the band on, you do some measurements, learn what the species is, maybe how old the bird is. Um, but then if you catch it again, you start to learn a little more. Maybe this bird will get caught down south somewhere and we'll figure out, well, how long did it take for it to get down there? Um, you know, where exactly is it wintering? Also maybe where where is it summering if we, if we catch it again next year earlier? Take your photo. I love red tails. They're so calm. Yep, just keep holding. If you let go at all, he's, he or she is going to be like, all right, I'm ready. So what you're going to do, um, yeah, well, nope, just on one, two, three, and then you're going to toss him up in the air just like a basketball. So he needs a pretty good lift. All right? One, two, three. 
This is a red tail. If you see, he's got this white chest. Oh, hi. He's spicy. This is an immature bird. I can tell because his eyes are kind of that light yellow color. As an adult, they'll get darker brown, kind of red. Um, you can see, it's kind of hard, but right by my lower hand, he's got this dark kind of belly band. Red tails in flight have this beautiful dark patagial mark here. And then a dark wrist comma, kind of down by my finger here. Let's see. So if you guys can see in his mouth, he kind of has these it's almost like little barbs on his, on his tongue. Now this helps him pull his prey back into his mouth. And you might see he's got his mouth open too. If he stops looking at me, he has a hole in the back of his throat that helps him breathe while he's eating. He also is kind of using his hackles. You see his head looks kind of puffy. So, yeah, there especially. So it's like a dog, you know, when they get nervous or excited, they'll lift their back fur up. He's doing the same type of thing with the feathers on his head. Now, red tails are one of our most common raptors. Um, they are found pretty much everywhere in the US. Um, so he could be migrating pretty short. Uh, he could go down to Minnesota or Iowa or he could be heading all the way down to the southern U.S. Now this is an immature bird. So you can see he's got this beautiful brown striped tail. As an adult he will have a reddish tail, of course, being a red-tailed hawk. Um, but that's why using those underwing characteristics is a really great way to tell this bird apart from other raptors. Now red tails are really interesting. They do have a lot of color variation. You can have light morphs, dark morphs, harlins, and criders.